In today's video, I want to talk some more about DWM and Suckless Software. Well, DWM and SL Status to be more specific. Because since my last video about DWM, my config has changed a fair amount. Because I have modified some scripts, I've made things a lot better, a little more dynamic, and I've even added an external menu and some click actions to the bar. So, without further ado, let's get started. So over here on my desktop, you can see I have a ridiculously large bar. That is, That was by design. I wanted to enlarge everything so it would be a little bit easier to see because I know I'm, catch, I'm capturing the whole desktop, and if I tried to capture just the bar, it would look really, really weird on video. I Trust me, I tried. This is DWM, and this is the regular DWM bar that's included or whatever. This up here is SL status. I've already made a video covering SL status. Uh, I'll put a card up here and let you see it, if that's of any interest to you. What I've done, I have actually changed a lot of these scripts because SL status out of the box will use C functions because they're a little bit faster and a little, light, a little more lightweight to populate items in your menu. And while that's you know great, it's just not as dynamic as I wanted it to be. Because let's say I wanted something to change up here when my VPN was connected, or I wanted something to change up here a little faster when my volume was muted or when my uh, volume was changed or what have you. And I wanted to add a little more functionality to my weather, uh, to my weather and my dates and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to bring over my little window to connect to my VPN. I use private internet access. I've been using them for years. It's a pretty great service. So if you keep an eye up here on my network little module up here, just watch. So it's connected and you see it had a little shield pop up right here. I was unable to achieve this in SL status with the C functions. I mean, I probably I could have, but it would have been a lot more work. It wouldn't have been this seamless. So I've done that with a couple of different things in here. Uh, there's no click actions up here. Where my click actions come into play is right here in the top corner. You see I have a little Debian logo here. If I click that, I get a little menu. This is X menu. X menu, there's a, I'll leave a link to it, to the GitHub page. DistroTube actually made a standalone video just for X menu. And if you haven't seen that, I'll try to find it and link it in the description as well. It is a great little menu and I think it adds a lot, a little more functionality to the desktop anyway. Especially if you wanted just a quick little menu. If you were feeling lazy and your hands were already on the mouse, click the menu and, you know, just launch your file manager. Why not? So anyway, I just kind of wanted to show that off, but what I wanted to, what I mainly wanted to do was show off the scripts that populate the bar. Let me pop back over here and I'll focus on just the terminal and we can see what we've got. Now that we're here at just the terminal, let's go over to our user local bin and take a look at our scripts from there. And you see, I have a lot more in here than what I used to have. So I have battery.sh. That's for my laptop. Don't worry about it. I have one for clock. I have one for CPU. I have one for forecast, HDD, memory, network, packages, and I'm still using that vol sh. And I'm using... Uh, I was using weather bar, but that's a that's a different thing. Uh, forecast, forecast is mainly for this right here or DWM blocks because I had that set up too just for testing. So now with all that said, let's take a look at some of these scripts. Let's tell you what. Let's take a look at the clock. So let's vim clock.sh and you see clock equals date. You know plus percent i. We're calling that right there because it's going to give us either a 0, 0 through a 12. What I wanted to do there was take those. I borrowed this piece right here from Luke Smith. So thank you, Luke. So when this variable 
equals any of these, it will change the icon to be uh, to represent the hour. And now, let's see, I did have this set up to go to DWM blocks, but eh, it's fine. So now all it does is echo out the date in the format that you just saw in my bar. And I'll have and I have all these on my GitHub page if you're interested in any of that. Let's let's take a look at another one. Let's look at let's say the network because the network I thought was pretty cool. So vim network.sh. The what I've got, I have host name equals a bunch of different variations of host name because well every every distro calls it a little bit different. And so now I have wire equals IPA and it grips for either ETH0 or ENP and then grips INET and pipes it through word count. Wi-Fi does the same thing except it grips WLAN and then INET and then pipes through word count. So if wire equals one, it echoes out my ethernet port. And then it gives me the host name dash I, pipes that through awk and prints the first column. That's what gives me my IP address. But if I'm hooked up to Wi-Fi, if Wi-Fi equals one, it gives me the Wi-Fi icon, my IP address, or hostname dash I, and then pipes through awk and prints the first column to give me my IP address. If I'm not hooked up to anything, I get the Wi-Fi signal with the slash through it. Another thing I have is if my VPN state, and so for my VPN function, state equals IP dash A, and then it grips ton zero, because ton zero does not exist in IP space A when the VPN is not connected. So it grips ton zero, then grips INET, pipes that through word count. So if state equals one, it echoes out my little shield that you just saw. If it doesn't, it echoes nothing. So to get all that together, all I did was echo out network and VPN. And don't worry about this. This was just something I had, I was playing with, messing with DWM blocks. And I've got similar things set up for every item in my status bar. So now let's head over to, to my SL status config and I'll show you how that's set up there. So if I CD into dot source where it's located in SL status, and then let's vim config.h. And if we come all the way down to the bottom, I've got this font a little bit, a little bit large. Okay. So what I did, I commented out all of the default stuff that I had from my GitHub page. And all of these, and all of this stuff is now updated on my GitHub page. So if you wanted to have something similar to this, have at it. All of these scripts do work with DWM blocks as well. So in SL status, you can run these C functions here and get CPU percentage. You can get all of this kind of information all the way up through here and just set it up in this kind of format. And you can even add icons and all that kind of stuff. So what I've done, I have commented all this out because up here you can also do a run command. You can run a custom shell command. So all of those dynamic scripts that I showed you, I've got those called here. So I have CPU, memory, packages, upgrades, HDD, network, volume, weather, and clock. All of them are custom shell commands. And yes, I know shell commands may be a little bit slower than C functions, but these are way more dynamic now. And to sacrifice a little bit of speed, in my opinion, it was a little bit worth it because, well, it just was. <laughs> So now that we're out of that, let's go into my DWM config and I'll show you where I call X menu in my top corner. So I'm going to go back one directory and see the end of DWM. Now vim config.def.h. And here you see a little Debian icon. That is from the status button patch. If you go to if you go over to suckless.org and go into the patches, you'll see like a status button patch. All I did was patch that in. Everything went fine. It added this line into my config.def.h. And by default, it will launch D menu. I didn't want that because I've got a key binding for that. So I changed the icon 
and then came all the way down to the bottom. So down here at the bottom, that patch added this line to the, to the config file. And what it did essentially was just run dmenu. So all I did, I left everything alone. I even left the spawn function alone, but I changed that dot v equals d menu cmd i changed that to shcmd for a shell command and i have it run x menu dot sh because the keen eyed among you probably saw x menu and x menu dot sh in my user local bin those are actually sim links to the x menu file or to the x menu folder that we were just in so i just ran make on that after i after i configured everything and added this logged in logged out and boom it started working so that's about all i've got for today i just kind of wanted to show off some of the things that have changed in my dwm config and my sl status config and really just show that you can use the same kind of functions in sl status as you can in dwm blocks because when i was showing those scripts you saw those little case statements at the end where they would signal dwm blocks but they were working just fine in SL status. And I also wanted to show X menu in action because X menu is, it's a very easy to customize little menu and why more people aren't using it, I don't know. So if you saw something in here that you liked, uh, I'm gonna leave a link down to my GitHub down in the description. And if you see something that you think I could have done better with, let's say, you know, uh, a different configuration for a module in the status bar or uh, a better theme or a better vim theme or a better whatever leave a comment let me know so like always thank you for watching like share and subscribe y'all have a nice evening